Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A BJJ, BJJ Marriage. Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. Oh, that was more in sync. Nice. That works out. <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys should get yourselves like a little mini, like, little clipboard thing, soundboard thing. You know, we're working on it. For, for <laughs> marking it, and then you can then you can write the episode on it. <laughs> Oh. We should, we should. We got this uh, fancy microphone fun. not too long ago, and we're still using our <laughs> original <laughs> quesadilla maker. <laughs> My dad says I'm not allowed to get rid of it because it's been there since episode one. He's like, you got to stick to your roots. <laughs> you should get sponsored is what you should do. I guess. <laughs> you should call up the El Paso Chili Company and be like, yo, we've been giving you tons of advertising. <laughs> 55 episodes later. Mexican food is ticking up in Milwaukee on Sunday, Mondays. <laughs> Yes, well, welcome guys to another episode of a BJJ Marriage with your hosts, Nick and Brittany, and our special guest today, Jason Lippert. Welcome. The one and only. But we don't know what his rank is, because he morning. forgot his belt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going I'm to go ahead and blame uh, Daylight Savings Time. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. It's that time of the year again. Yeah. Brittany was like, get up, we got to record. I was like, we have an hour. She was like, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah. you're right." No, I thought I was being, I thought I was being responsible, and I set an alarm, and I double checked it, and I got up, and then after I got up, I was like, "This feels early." <laughs> it, it is early. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. I hate uh, having to switch all the clocks this day. Like you look around, you always forget one for like a week. Like I'm probably never going to change that one. I don't think that one has ever been correct. Oh yeah, I don't think we changed it from last time it was David's time. So I think that one's correct actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. It's correct now. <laughs> uh, my Jeep was like that for years. Like my previous Jeep, it was just the wrong time for half the year. And then for half the year, yeah. it was the right time. Yeah. That was it. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So I, I am a black belt. Yes. He is. He's been training like my whole life or something. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Off and on though. So. <laughs> Still counts though. Yes. So yeah. how did you get started? How old were you? Uh, I was in my, I was in my early 20s. Um, and, uh, so I have a chance. Got it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I like, and it, we can just start off by saying like, I know my, I know my strengths and weaknesses. I'm a very mediocre black belt, like I'm pretty average. I'm a hobbyist. I'm not a sport guy. I'm not a, like a hardcore fighter guy. All of my knuckles still work really well. <laughs> right. I never torn off a fingernail, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, so I was up in Oshkosh. Uh, I went to uh, college there, and um, I'd been I'd done taekwondo for a long, long time, and I, I was disenchanted with it because um, all all along, like I've been like a more of a self defense kind of person, so I wanted self defense for it. Mm -hmm. um, then when I went to college, you got to take gym classes, so I took judo. And uh, the you did judo in gym class uh, for for Oshkosh, you go to Oshkosh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'm so jealous. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the professor there was Alex Inseong. I think, uh, if I'm remembering it correctly. And then uh, from him, I got uh, connected to um, Mehdi Mohammedian, who's actually uh, an Olympic judo guy up in the Fox Valley. Wow. Ooh. And he, he would teach at the YMCA, like all throughout the Fox Valley. So he'd come down, I think it was once a week, and teach in Oshkosh. So I went from uh, judo at, at UW Oshkosh, just a a normal class, you know, along with basic stuff. And I was doing judo uh, with uh, Mady, um for eh, about a year ish, nine months, fourteen months, I don't know, something like that. And um, <clears throat> we had a mat work night, and uh, some 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 people came up from Fond du Lac just for mat work, and mm. they destroyed everyone, everyone there. Just and I was like, just wiped the floor. Yeah, I was like, what are you guys doing? And uh, so the the guy who came up was actually uh, Ben Salas, mm. who oh. runs Seamless Progression. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I've competed against his son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he right. Beat me, which and is uh, fine. and uh, and that was a good match. Like it was a really really good match. I remember. Um, <laughs> so he he looks at me and goes, "It's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu," and I was like, <laughs> "Awesome!" <laughs> because because by that point in time, um. I'd seen a, a couple of UFCs, right? Yeah. Like, I think it was UFC 2 was the first one I saw. I didn't see the first, like the very first one. But I think 2 is where uh, uh, the final match was Dan Severin. 
and Severin taps to a triangle. Mm. And I remember sitting there and I had a friend at the time who was in a, a, a fraternity. So I was at the frat house with a bunch of frat bros. I was not a frat bro. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were nice guys. Nice, nice frat. And, uh, and we were all watching this and, uh, and nobody, none of us watching what was happening, um, understood what, what had just transpired. What yeah. We, we were yeah. like, why did that? he just tap? That looks dumb. <laughs> and, uh, but that was in the back of my head. And then, uh, you know, kind of put things together, um, over time. Like I, I realized later on that in Lethal Weapon, uh, at the end of the first movie, uh, Mel Gibson Puts uh puts the bad guy, I remember his name, in a triangle. Oh, okay. Like, and chokes him out in a triangle. And you're like, whoa. And then and then uh so I was like, oh, I, I have seen this before, you know, and I was just like, so it's been around for a while. And also then I ended up remembering seeing like the Gracie Challenge in the back of martial mm-hmm. arts magazines. Mm. And uh and I was like, Well, this is this is some weird stuff, full page thing. Come down here, fight us, we'll give you the video tape. <laughs> you know. And so like for for my you know, for I don't know, my teenage years up, I'd sort of been peripherally aware that this existed and this was around somewhere, but, you know, I'm looking at Wisconsin. Right. So, like, yeah. <laughs> where are you going to do jujitsu? So, they were doing jujitsu, and I was like, well, this is amazing. I'm like, I want to do your stuff, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to start driving down to Fond du Lac. And so, Ben suggested, like, let's just start a jujitsu club at UW Oshkosh, because I was still a student there. Mm. So, I, I, um, I chartered up a new club. And we had the UW Oshkosh BJJ Club, so the UW you BJJC. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, I was the I was I was the president, secretary, and treasurer <laughs> all at once. Because in order to have a club, you had to have three positions. Okay. Mm. But it didn't say that you couldn't be all three. Yeah. So I, I was El Presidente. That was my first jiu-jitsu nickname was El Presidente. Ah. Um, also because I wasn't actually in charge of it because Ben was. <laughs> so yeah, no, we. Uh, we we collected uh, we collected some dues and stuff. It wasn't a lot. Um, we we held classes in the was it the Cole Center? We were we were on the uh, the gymnastics floor, which was wow. nice for doing throws and stuff. Like getting thrown onto a gymnastics floor, like with a springboard mm-hmm. floor. That's okay. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you bounce? Yeah. Like, did you catch yeah. air every no, time you got thrown? That's oh, super cool. And it's <laughs> looking nice. It's really nice and very satisfying to you to throw somebody on there because you can kind of like really lay them into it and they just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we, we, we worked out on there. We were in, uh, like one of the wrestling rooms. We were in like a, a an upper side gym that was near the, uh, the union student union. I can't remember what that name, the name of that gym was. Um, that one was less, that would, was less cool. Um, it was, it was a lot more basic. Mm. Um, funny you talk about Oshkosh. We just drove past there like two days ago. Yeah. yeah. There's a cage fight for <laughs> yeah. Mount Temple and Gustavo. Right, right, right. For the kickboxing yeah. fight. Yeah. Um, it's funny, we were driving past, and I have Jada in the car, and Jada's 13, and she looks at Oshkosh on the sign, she's like, Oshkosh, isn't that a store? <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, okay. It's also a whole city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's how I got into it, and I can go on like from there to keep going, but basically, I finished school, went to grad school, when I went to grad school, I was away from jiu-jitsu, and then I, I got a job, and then, um, and then I... Then I was like, oh, I need to look around for something. I looked around and I was in Milwaukee by then. And I found uh, a little bit of jujitsu again because Ben Salas had left and come back. And he was teaching a jujitsu class at Four Winds uh, Martial mm-hmm. Arts. And um, and so I, I popped in there. But then Ben was leaving again to go somewhere else. And um, uh, one of the other guys there, Tony Sell, um, he, had his own, he had his own martial arts school and still does. Mm-hmm. And so he invited me to come over and, and be like the coach there. And I was like a three stripe white belt but by then i like cumulatively i, I had a, a few years uh, in and uh, i'd been to a couple seminars uh, and stuff like that so then i moved over cool. to, to tony's place and coached there until everybody knew everything that i knew and i was like well guys <laughs> i gotta go train again so because i don't know anything anymore that you don't know yeah and uh so then i hooked back uh i hooked back up with henry matamoros i got a loop back at uw oshkosh henry would come up to, to UW Oshkosh. And this is in 90, uh, like 97, I think. Wow. Like, that is uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> way, way back then when, when Henry would come up to UW Oshkosh. So that's how I know Henry. Mm-hmm. One more bit of history. Uh, did a did a tournament in Fond du Lac when I was like a, still a crispy white belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As uh, Ben Salas organized and he's like, I just come on down and just do it. I'm like, okay, came on down. It was, it was fun. 
lots of people came from all over the place. There was a guy competing in his like Taekwondo gi, yeah, you know, thing. And I was like, oh man, um, because I had a judo gi then, like a nasty, like natural colored one with a different skirt weave. Oh, yeah, with like the the diamond weave, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh. (laughs) So, uh, the big heavy ones that you can rip someone's face off with. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like this one. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I competed against Henry in that tournament, uh, cause there's just one giant division and, uh, Jeff Curran. Jeff Curran wow. was a blue belt at the time and wow. he destroyed me. Like he, he ran up maximum score, then he choked me. And, uh, and I was like, by the time it was over, I was like, thank you for just choking me and like, like, getting it over with. <laughs> uh, his match against Henry, like I wish somebody had recorded that cause Basically, the tournament was so small that they used practically the entire gym. Like they were uh, everywhere. There was no out of bounds. Uh, it was really, it was really amazing. Wow, that is really awesome. Yeah. So I, I bumped into what ended up being, um, you know, Henry being the first black belt in Wisconsin. Like I, I worked out with him like really early on, mm-hmm. uh, and then I met. Jeff Curran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> met him on the mat. Yeah. He met me. <laughs> he totally remembers me. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, then I, then I just looped back around and found Henry again. I started training at Henry's, um, and but also, like, coaching at this other place. And eventually, after a few more years of that, I was like, well, Henry was like, I'm not really going to promote you until you're, like, a full-time student. He didn't exactly say that, but I figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, it seems to be what he does with most people. Yeah. <laughs> There's a secret crest here. You have to figure it out and you'll get the rewards. Yeah. <laughs> so then I moved over and started training full time with Henry. Um, and then the off and on part after that is really it was injuries that turned into inertia. <clears throat> I had separated mm-hmm. ribs three times. Oof. Um, so your knuckles are intact, but your ribs did not make it. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really, it was all, it was 100% the result of poor technique on my part. Mm. Um, I was getting my, my guard passed. And, uh, and I was just, I was twisted hips one way, shoulders another way. And mm-hmm. I was yeah. trying to like defend that instead of moving on. Like I was trying to hold that position. And one of my ribs just went boop. Mm. Um, Yikes. I think, I think yeah. it was, uh, it was, uh, Scott Houston, uh, I think it was the first time. Yeah, his pressure is incredible. Yeah. And I've then heard. the second time, I don't remember who it was, but it it might have been Jason Kazmarek, Kaz. Mm-hmm. And then the third time was actually, it was actually repopped the same rib. And that one was with John Friedland. And we were just like sitting across from each other. And he grabbed me for like a, a butterfly sweep. Yeah. And when he cranked me, my rib went like this. And he, <laughs> and he saw it because we were doing nogi. And he saw this uh, going, and he just stopped me. He had this horrified look on his face. He just looked at me and I, I was like, we should probably stop. <laughs> so, whoa. So yeah, so I, can, I, I just imagine John's face. Yeah, I, I lost. I lost a lot of time to that, and then, uh, and then I lost so much time that I, I didn't come back. I, I moved on to other things. Um, so that takes us up to about two thousand. So that was like two thousand eight. Um, oh, I also had a suborbital, uh, mm. an infraorbital, uh, non-displaced fracture. Wow. Once. Wow. I'm working out. And that was Paul Boyajin. Um, <laughs> he was he was passing my guard and I was trying to pin his foot up and he was doing a standing pass. I was trying to pin his foot up behind his butt. And mm. I moved my hand when he tried to like jump off the foot and ended up just kicking me right in the face. <laughs> and uh, He zigged while he zagged. Yeah. And then like <clears throat> I remember like apologizing for swearing so much. <laughs> and they just looked at me and they're like you didn't say anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh. it was all in your head. <laughs> yeah. So dang, th- those are all my injuries. I actually didn't lose too much time from that. Um, I actually went a few weeks later, I went down to a competition, uh, in Chicago. I think it's probably a Naga down there. And, uh, um, uh, the, the ophthalmologist, and I was like, Hey man, I gotta, I'm going to go to a competition a little bit. Like, is this going to be okay to go? And, he looked at me like I was insane. <laughs> As most doctors do to most practitioners. Right? <laughs> and he's like, I guess so. So I went down there. And then uh, that was that was a funny, weird disappointment. So I, I lost uh, both my first matches immediately because I don't know if it was the combination of my age and what, but in the nogi section, it was basically there were, there were two sections for me. Because I was already in my 30s by then, right? Okay, yeah. And uh, 
<clears throat> it was 185 and below. Oh. And over 185. Mm-hmm. Guess what I weighed? Over, over 185. 186 pounds. Oh, no. And the guy at the, the, guy at the table is like, do you want to go cut a little weight and come back? And I was like, no, that's cool, man. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong decision. These guys are huge. There's a, <laughs> there's a picture of me that I have somewhere. Uh, um, I'm doing, I'm, I'm executing uh, a, a guillotine escape. And I have crawled all the way up this guy. And he is so, like, long. Like, <laughs> if I tried to stand up, I couldn't. My feet wouldn't touch the ground because he's just sitting back with me. And I'm crawled all the way up him with my shit across his hips and, you know, the arm yeah. over the shoulder thing. And, and I'm just sitting there trying to do something. And he's just, like, squeezing me slowly. And when he set me down, he said, good good try, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was, I mean, I'm not oh, for man. cutting weight. But, like, yes, a pound. You should definitely cut yeah. a pound. Like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's crazy. hard when you're on the small end of the bracket, and it also sucks too because normally it's like 185 to 205, I think now. But if you're yeah. saying it just went up and up and up, that's that's wild. At that time, I mean, that was that yeah. was a long time ago. Well, that was like 14 years ago. Yeah. Divisions. Oh, jujitsu was so different 14 years ago too. Probably. Yeah. Clearly, with weight brackets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um like one of the reasons why I ended up coming back to fluid and and specifically under uh, Brenton is because. I knew him when he was a blue belt under Henry. Wow, that's mm-hmm. weird. And he'd been a, I think he'd been a blue belt from somebody else and then came to Henry. I don't I don't re- really remember it, but when I when I encountered him he was a blue belt and uh you know just absolutely strong all the time. I think he was mm-hmm. I think he was a carpenter back mm-hmm. then. Yeah. And, that's uh, right. Just carpenter and wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolute monster, right? <laughs> um but uh but then when I found out that he'd o- he'd open a gym and then when I was trying to come back this is like like, uh, this is the end of 2015 on my side of it where I'm like, I need a new year's resolution. I'm going to mm-hmm. get myself back in shape. I think it was about 220, 222, oh. uh, at the time. So nice, nice chubby dude, middle-aged <laughs> dude. And, uh, and, uh, like I was extra interested because I knew that he knew Henry mm-hmm. and he, yeah. he'd worked under Henry for a really, really long time. And I wanted that. I wanted to get that continuation. Um, so I enjoyed the way Henry taught and also enjoyed Henry's focus of jujitsu was like, everything's jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't too much a self-defense guy, but he wasn't too much a sport guy mm-hmm. and he wasn't too much a fight guy, but he did fight. Like he, he did compete and did right. all of this stuff, but it's like the jujitsu was just sort of like, in the in the middle there, so he wasn't hyper specialized, kind of. Mm-hmm. And that's, I don't think he could have been back then. Or maybe he could have been. I don't know. But um, yeah, like like worm guard was not a thing. Yeah. Like all of these all these weird you know hyper technical things, it just wasn't a thing. Um, and so like when I came back, you know, I started watching videos to see what was going on in the jujitsu world. I was I was horrified. I was Kim like, Cornelius. I, <laughs> I don't Gordon think, Ryan. I don't think I can do any of this. I don't, I don't even know why they're doing this. Like, why would you do this? What's an Imanari roll? <laughs> you see so, the fifty fifty, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I remember, like, I remember getting into fifty fifty like way back in the day, and we just laugh. Like, we was like, oh, this is dumb. Yeah. And now we there's a whole here. technical subset of like nasty things you can do to each other, yeah. back takes. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so, um, so at any rate, like the my my jujitsu is. Um, you know, it's like uh, it was interrupted. And when I came back, um, I I tried to find something that was a little closer to what I was doing there because I knew like adapting to some new style was right. not going to happen. So how long were you off between the eye injury? Yeah, what was your biggest gap? The eye injury and the and the guillotine defense? No, the 2015. <laughs> oh, 2015. So the eye injury wasn't the last thing. Actually, oh. I, I actually came back from that pretty quickly. It was the it was the last rib. It was about two. It was 2008. Um, it was 2008 to um, uh, to 2000, the end of 2015. So it was, it was mm, yeah. almost like eight full years, wow. I would say. Um, and I actually, I tried to come back a few times. So I'd, I'd um, John Free, the Neutral Ground had a school in Bayview. That's actually the first time I met Mike Coy. Okay. Cool. Um, As a blue belt? Uh, he was wearing a white belt. I think so. He may have been a white belt, yeah. I don't know what Mike was. I don't remember, but I was I was a purple belt and by two thousand eight. I was a purple belt, um, and like fre- fairly freshly minted. One day Henry just like 
like I don't even remember if I had stripes on my blue belt. Like he uh, he started doing that too, where like you just roll forever and he just went yeah. to put stripes and then he just walk out and hand you a belt. Yeah. Um surprise. Right? But uh Um So I was a purple belt at the time. And then, so, like, when I keep coming, trying to come back, you know, bring a purple belt, I felt bad about it because I was, like, out of shape. Were you a purple under Henry then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was, uh, That's exciting. Yeah. And there's a weird promotion story, too, right? My blue belt test was actually in front of Professor Sauer because mm. it was one of, it was early on in Henry's relationship with Professor Sauer. Um, and uh, so I, I did my blue belt test with him. Um, and uh, you guys on Tom, right? Mm-hmm. I've told this yeah. story a few times. But, Sorry. like, Tom... Tom, naturally gifted, but also like really dedicated athlete, like and you know just yeah does jujitsu. I never knew him in that competition phase of his life. Which I did. <laughs> I wish I would have. <laughs> um, but uh, he like he didn't know what the test was. So when we were testing, it sounds like Tommy. <laughs> and I partnered with him, like. I would do the technique first, and then I would whisper to him as he was doing technique, he'd be, and he'd be like, oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool, okay. And I was like, oh, good job. So so I, I talked Tom through his blue belt test. <laughs> um, you should nice. thank you. Yeah. So then, so I got a, I have a blue belt certificate from Professor Sauer for that. Cool. But then my purple belt was just Henry like, you are now purple belt. <laughs> so there's there's nothing. Like, you know, you'd have to go check with Henry and be like, is he really a purple belt? Like, uh, I think I remember giving it to him. <laughs> yeah, he does. So Sure. Um so yeah, I tried to come back a couple times and um it, you know, it was it was hard to it was mostly just hard to get over my own feelings of like being inadequate and stuff. And like the higher the rank you are and the longer you've been out, uh, at least for my for me, the more embarrassed I was to even show up because oh. like you can't get through warm ups without being gassed. Yeah, and but just you used to be able to. Yeah. yeah. And then you're rolling with people and they're doing new stuff and you're like, is this? <laughs> and say, I think it was Sam Neverman uh, mm-hmm. was, uh, I think he was like a high blue belt. And I think he got it. I think he got his purple belt. Like what, one of the times I was trying to come back, he'd gone down to a tournament and cleaned up at it and come back and like, yeah, like, I, I couldn't touch him like at all. Yeah. Um, a lot of these names of people you're talking about. Well, he might be the first one you actually mentioned, but is going to be one of the people teaching at the 12-hour charity rollathon. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's really cool. You also included, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm getting nervous about what I'm going to teach. What? <laughs> when, I mean, You're not going to teach Cradle? Teach the Blue Belt Test. No. Uh, <laughs> teach the Blue Belt Test. That's a good one. That'd be a funny one. Uh, maybe a nostalgia tour. Yeah. Um, no, I, I have been thinking about what I'm going to teach, and then, because um, like... When I do teach classes, I I usually either teach stuff I think people really need to know, um, or I teach stuff that I'm just trying to learn myself, right? And mm-hmm. that's a really cool mentality, though, too. Like when you were teaching a couple of weeks ago, the cradle, I remember you saying you're like, I don't really know this that well, but we're gonna figure it out. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. And then I was working with the with the newer girls, and I kept putting them all in cradle. And right before I did it, I was like, Have you ever been in this position? And then I would do it, and then they'd be like, This. <laughs> Thanks, Lipper. <Lippert. laughs> that's awesome. That's fantastic. That's a uh, you know. That's um, yes. It, I I do it. I mean, I do it for a couple of reasons. One, I think specifically for the cradle, I think it's a. I mean, at least locally, to my experience, it's an overlooked position mm-hmm. that has a high utility. Um, partly because it's it's unfamiliar, and partly because the the way that it it fits into actual jujitsu like. Um, transitions and submissions, mm-hmm. it, it 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 locks in mm-hmm. like it's yeah. it's a real thing. It's a tight position. Yeah, and you can execute it in a, you can execute it in a way where you're not hurting your opponent. Like we're not cranking necks and stuff, but you still have a cradle on them and you're still controlling them. So it's like a it's like a sub variation of a side control, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you technically you have a technical mount and you've got side control and you've got north south and then you've got all these little shades of them. All right? mm-hmm. So I think it I think it fits in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like it for the utility, um, and I like it because it's not well known. <clears throat> and then uh, the reason I taught it instead of just trying to do it to people is if I'm trying to do something new, I want lots of people to know uh, what it is that's about to happen to them. <laughs> and that comes from 
even recently, right? Even like a few years ago, um, like 2018, I was working on Kimuras and I started working on Kimuras and I didn't really teach them to anybody. And so mm-hmm. like, I felt bad because like people didn't know how to roll through a Kimura to like continue, like to continue the game. And they, mm-hmm. they didn't, yeah. they didn't know defenses against it and they yeah. didn't know what it was going to feel like either. Right. And they're just like, my shoulder hurts. Ow. Tap. <laughs> yeah. So you couldn't get to like late stage Kimura stuff. Right, because they they didn't even know. Right, and also there was there was a higher risk. I'm I'm certain that I contributed to like hurting at least two people's shoulders, Oof. and I feel bad about that. Um, but you were just trying to yeah. find your game. <clears throat> I I could have I could have stopped too. <laughs> so it's not, it's not I'm not blameless. But my solution then is just to just to be out front about it and just say like I'm about to start doing this to everybody, and so I'm going to teach you know, a, a primer mm-hmm. on this because mm-hmm. I don't know it either. So I'm teaching the stuff that I need to learn, but I'm also exposing everybody to it. So now when I come and cradle some people, instead of like freaking out about it, mm-hmm. they're like, nah, yeah, we practice. This. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how my dad teaches too. He says that he likes teaching the defenses to things that he likes to do to people so that he can up his game so that when you defend the things that he wants to do to you, he can now figure out how to counter it. Mm-hmm. That's it's very noble of him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when I share my notes, I went to a Kimura seminar with uh, uh, Rezovich, uh, Adam Rezovich. He's from Chicago, from Chicago. Really, really cool guy. Like, love him. Um, if I get a chance to see it, to go to a seminar of his, I'll, I'll definitely go again. Um, <clears throat> he, he taught a section on, like, uh, defenses against Kimura and, mm. and some of the different positions you can end up in, like the Kimura crucifix position. And uh, I shared my notes with a couple people, and I had that like blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> I redacted all, all of the defenses. This like, is here are my me. notes, but you can't. this exists. I, I wanted them to know that the information exists. So, like the the section of my notes was like defenses, yeah. but it was all black. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'll have to pay for this. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. So. Brenton, you know, I, I would like to say he can afford to be generous that way because he's already pretty, like, pretty good. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep all that stuff to myself. <laughs> yeah, well, he's like, that's not the only thing I'm going to do to you anyways, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I want to go back to the charity rollathon too, mm-hmm. because I don't think we've given enough mention to that. But we are doing... I don't think it was announced the last time we did a podcast. Yeah, I think we're still working on it. It's going. People but... are driving and shoveling. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we're doing a, it's called a, is it called Charity? Charity Rollathon. Roll-a-thon yeah. For 12 hours. 12 hours. 12 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> so I it's going <laughs> to. It's a brilliant idea. It's fun. I'm excited about it. So it's going to be <clears throat> held at Fluid and it's going to be an hour of teaching, but it's not just from one instructor. It'll be from two black belts on opposite sides of the mat teaching different things. So you for can go hour. to each seminar if you want. You can go back and forth. You can stay at one for the whole time. You can try to split your eyes and watch both. Yeah, that's what I might do. I might just sit in the middle and be like. A little SpongeBob action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it's going to be an hour of open mat. And then the next hour, it's going to be the same concept, but with two different black belts. So we're having. 12 different black belts and six hours of instruction and six hours of open mat. And it's going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. We got people from like fluid, neutral ground, open guard, Rufus sport. Primal? No. No. Oh, yeah, they're brown. Yeah, I think that's. You should have seen us trying them. to make a list of the black belts that we wanted. And we just kept naming like really good people. And we're like, but they're brown yeah. and we need uh. the black belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not saying brown belts can't teach but like the whole purpose of it was to like bring all the black belts that we could together to yeah. create a huge crowd which will be yeah. super fun it's gonna go from 8 a.m to 8 p.m yeah and i'm gonna roll the whole time i'm sure you will i'm just gonna eat bananas and peanut butter pretzels <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a fun day uh, i'm gonna show up with your later. belt hopefully yeah with my belt. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging on a chair in my kitchen <laughs> It's a Kristen chair. That's right. I like to I like to leave it out so that the the animals in the house know what they're dealing with. Uh, yeah, they they care a lot. Yeah, I should leave my belt out too because uh, I put it on today and it was still wet from yesterday's open mat. Oh, <laughs> mm. cute. Yeah. So and then to talk about, I think it's a fantastic idea. It's something that hasn't been done 
not that I know everything that's happened in the jiu-jitsu world in Milwaukee or Southeast right, Wisconsin, right. but I don't believe it's ever been done. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, either. not something like this. Oh, the, and the other thing, like the biggest part about it is it's for charity. So right, all the proceeds right. are going to... A, Crohn's and colitis. Yeah. And this time tomorrow, this which time is tomorrow. cancer kids. Childhood cancer, yeah. 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 Yep. That's fantastic. That is really great. I, I love the idea. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, and I, I was thinking about I'll, I'll probably, like the... <clears throat> the sweet spot is half guard for me, so I, I can mm. I can teach a bunch of stuff from there. I can teach guard passes. I can teach sweeps. <clears throat> I, I can know teach someone submissions. who's teaching a half guard for their blue belt ceremony tomorrow. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh. We worked on that last night. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a belt ceremony tomorrow, so we're excited about that. I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, we have a uh, two females in our gym turning blue and purple, so very excited. One of my blue sisters is joining me into the purple belt world. Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> That's really cool. But yeah, yesterday, uh, Cindy was like, I have no idea what I'm going to teach. I'm like, well, you really like half guard, so let's work on some half guard stuff. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we brought that. Yeah, I've got uh, parent-teacher conferences tomorrow, mm. but they're virtual. <laughs> Which so means... does Tracy. And she's like, I am not missing my belt ceremony <laughs> to talk to your parents. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so so we're doing a, so it's virtual. So there's a sign up. You sign up for the thing. And so far, the evening, like last time I checked, which was Friday afternoon, the evening is open. And and on top of that, because virtual, like I can be at home and, mm-hmm. and do the conferences. Mm-hmm. So fingers crossed. I'll be at home as long as I remember my belt and those slots don't fill up. I'll make it in time. Otherwise, I'll just I'll just come mid, you know, mid yeah. shark tank or yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> I know. Tracy said, if I have to sit in that chair and take the, te- the parent-teacher conferences until 645, I will do it. <laughs> There'll be a new cut screen like, a new fighter has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> and then you walk in. <laughs> yeah, that'd That's be great. Fun. But yeah, you got your brown belt in a belt ceremony by surprise right yes i think i i remember that day that was a fun oh, day yeah yeah no and, and brenton did that specifically because like i think he remembers like what henry was doing and he kind of did that at least that's what he told me i don't know if yeah true. <laughs> yeah i came back from vacation like i was in cleveland with my family yeah didn't you so drink was, that day too <laughs> i was eating all the things i was drinking all the things and then uh and then we and then we got back <clears throat> and i was i was telling my wife i'm like I'm, I'm not going to go in tonight. You know, like it's, <laughs> and I, I knew there was this, I knew there was a ceremony happening. I'm like, I'm just not going to go in tonight. I'm just cool. And uh, she's like, No, you should go in. Like, you should go in. And I was like, Did she know? Yes. Oh. Yeah. He contacted yeah. her to make sure that I'd be there. And then so she was like, No, you, you, you go, go in. You should go in. It'll be fine. So I showed up, and then uh, like I, I was changing and you know standing around and stuff like that. And then. Uh, um, he he called me he called me out and I was like what and then like <laughs> two minutes later my wife walked in too like and I was yeah. like oh okay I see this is. <laughs> so, that's, that's exciting awesome. that's fun. very cool yeah so, yeah yeah so um, a couple other things you're doing I know that you're working towards a MMA judge certification yes something along those lines yep I started that um so. And we saw you at the, um, side note real quick, we had two fluid warriors at a, have their first kickboxing, kickboxing. fight. Amateur kickboxing, but yeah. Yeah. And they didn't win, but we got lots of lessons bring back to the lab and they put themselves out there and I'm really proud of them. They were out there and we weren't, so. Yeah, it was Gustavo and them. Nick Von Tempo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, <clears throat> that was, uh, I got into it, uh, so February 2020. Uh, Henry came in for a, a black belt promotion mm. for um, Tony Sell and Dr. Luis. Um, and, um, and a bunch of the old crowd were there. Um, you know, Aoife was there. Um, Omar mm. was there. Um, I've got a picture, which is pretty cool. I didn't take the picture. And I, don't, I don't know who was behind the camera. But it's like after an open mat sort of thing. And uh, and. I'm doing this sign, which I've never, like, I do not, I'm not this guy. That's but me. like in the picture, I'm like, hey. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's, I think it's from like 2004. Mm. Like, I think it's really old. And, uh, but like Henry, Henry's there. Jason Kazmarek's there. Tom is in that picture. Uh, Aoife's in that picture. Uh, Barb, 
don't remember Barb's last name though. Um, and uh, and like everybody in that picture, as far as I know, is a black belt now. Wow. Um, and which was kind of super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but where was I going with this? Oh, so Henry 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 had like a a list that he was keeping in his head of like people that he he was still trying to like pick up and gather right you know and and, mm-hmm. and see them through to the to the black belt level. Um, and so he was he was like. Oh, Jason, you are the only one who's left now. You know, I'll, I'll come back for you. And I'm like, no, it's okay, Henry. I'm I'm under Brenton now, and I'm on a <clears throat> I'm on a path. I'm on a journey, stuff like that. Um, he's like, oh, okay, but to be sure, right? And I'm like, no, it's it's cool, Henry. I'm good. And you know, and so he talked, and he was like, okay, well, when you when you have your ceremony, I'll come out for you. And I was like, that's awesome. And you know, COVID happens. Yeah. Um, and so no, it wasn't. Was it? <clears throat> Maybe it was twenty. Maybe it was twenty nineteen when it happened, and then he, and then, and then I have it later. I feel like I feel like I remember it happening just before COVID, but maybe it's the February before. Point being, COVID is the time suck, anyways. COVID happens, right? <laughs> but at the at that black belt ceremony, whatever it happened, 2019, 2020, whatever it was, um, got invited out to dinner. So I'm out to dinner with uh, Zach Otto, Jake Clip, um, Doctor Luis, mm-hmm. paid for the whole dinner, um, and Henry's out there too. And uh, and then I think Janice was there, right? Oh, maybe maybe he was too. Because I I heard about this dinner. <laughs> In that case, I'm sure he was there. And uh, I was I was talking to Jake and uh, and Zach, you know, um, cause they had, Jake's a promoter, and you know he's got a stable of fighters. You know, Zach's fought the UFC, mm-hmm. um, and uh, he's really cool, solid guys. You know, carrying on Henry's sort of, you know. Mm. lineage did i meet um, zach Otto? um he's you've seen him around a couple of times but you probably didn't put a face to the name was he here what do you mean by here remember so all these names that you were mentioning oh, we had at the them, barbecue yeah we had them all over for a barbecue when master sour was here i don't think master sour wanted to have a barbecue with all no, of us i don't people. think and jake like, and zach came to the barbecue okay, okay. <laughs> so so um I, we were talking about, like, I was asking some questions about UFC stuff because that was kind of interesting to me. And yeah. it's just kind of, it's it's not normal, I still think, to, like, just sit down next to somebody who's fought in the UFC right. and, and stuff like that. So I was just asking some questions, like, what's it like, you know, behind the scenes? And he was sharing, he was sharing some interesting facts. And then uh, and then Jake said to me, like, he's like, you know, I think I think you'd be a good judge. And I was like, you know, what? Well, I think that. <laughs> and he's like, well, because you, like, yeah, you got... Uh, jiu-jitsu experience and um one of the one of the standard complaints uh in the mma world is is still that a lot of the judge the judges come from boxing backgrounds and the point system is a a boxing based system right um but they're they're always whenever there's a fight that like doesn't get like goes to a decision and it doesn't get decided the right way like the there's a feeling i don't think it's universal but there's a Mm -hmm. common feeling that it's partly because the judges don't value the the jujitsu work or the groundwork as much. Yeah, um, or, I see that on Twitter all the time. Yeah, so that was that was what he said, and I'm not like I'm not thinking like I'm going to revolutionize judging or anything like that. Um, I'm I'm going to learn the system as it is, judge it the way it is, and, mm-hmm. and it'll carry on. Um, but I was like, yeah, uh, I'm kind of bored. But let's figure this out. So. Um, 2021 when uh like in early in 2021 i expected like the universe to open up oh, oh thank you <laughs> bad, buddy. um i expected you know the world to open up uh vaccines and stuff like that yes please. and uh and so i started looking at like Thanks. oh what am i going to do for my hobbies you know what's going to be new during COVID, i picked up a couple new hobbies um and i was like oh I, I will give this a try so i asked um <clears throat> I asked Jake to to give a handshake to uh, Mary Murphy Edwards, the um, the commissioner for the state of Wisconsin. I met her too, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so he you know he did a little like a little um, uh, email sort of like introduction. Says here's this guy, you know, he's so and so, he's interested in becoming a judge, and she was like, okay, well here's what you have to do, and uh, and then there was like, the Delta wave happened again. So like last mm-hmm. year, I only went, I only shadowed one event. And that was a uh, Ironworks way out. I think it was in on Alaska, way out like way out on the west side, west side of uh, Wisconsin. Oh, I thought you said out in Alaska. No, <laughs> on Alaska. 
Interesting. That'd be cool. For Wisconsin judges. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's pretty close to the border of like Minnesota. It's way out there. Okay, it's a long okay. drive. And um, that was great. Like first event, like all oh, wide open. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the, the judging is not easy. Like it really, it's really not. It's uh, n- not that I expected like to yeah. be easy. Right. It's clearly not. <laughs> but it's really not. You can't. <clears throat> You can't get distracted. Like you can't mm-hmm. be like, oh, I've got a shopping list, or I've got this, or oh, when I get home, I'm gonna do this, or did I leave the the stove on? Right. None of like, cause, like the the moment that you need to have seen and to take into account can happen like that. Yep. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, I noticed that even on Saturday or Friday when we were there, and there was like this really crazy fight happening, and I think like someone was trying to get past me, so I just like moved over so they could, and then I missed like this huge knockout, and I was like. Dang it! <laughs> yes. yeah. It happens super quick. Like, and very different from watching it on TV where, like, you've got all these camera angles mm-hmm. and if something gets obstructed, they'll cut to a different camera angle. Or they'll and then, replay it. And then after it's over, <laughs> they'll, they'll replay it over and over and over yeah. again. So <clears throat> um, there's that. Another thing is that when the when the bell rings, you you have to write down your decision and hold up your, like, they collect slips of paper. Yeah, like and, immediately. And like you have to have it up and ready to go. So like you don't get to sit there and kind of reflect on the round and then, you know, decide. You have to have you have to have been arriving at the decision constantly. Mm. Um and then and then like be decisive and write it down. So very interesting. Yeah. I I've experienced a bit of what you're talking about when I was a ref for Fuji. That was an 8-hour, 9-hour refing though, <laughs> not like one match. But I had to stay focused on the whole match as much as possible and not look away at anything. And that it takes a lot of focus. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, I only had to make one ref decision, That's which cool. wasn't that bad. But it was like, you know. That one was rough, though, because neither. OK, so it was a standing match the whole well, time. It was two white belts who had no idea how to do and beginner downs, nogi. And they were just forehead to forehead. The whole five minutes. And then it went to overtime because there was no points. <laughs> and they did that for a whole nother minute. And I was like. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's that's rough, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was funny because I was the scorekeeper. So I had both of the coaches on the side. And they were both looking at me. And they're like, who's he going to pick? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> the guy that changed the levels most. Yeah. <laughs> one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a. You know, the 10 point must system is interesting. Like. And I don't know. I don't know if must means must pick a winner, but I feel like it's what it means. Like there has to be a winner yeah. every round. There, there are no ten yes. ten rounds. Mm-hmm. None. Um, so somebody always does. Uh, for kickboxing, the the rules they were using for the kickboxing matches. Um, if uh, if one opponent scores a knockdown against the other mm-hmm. one, then it's automatically a ten eight. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, which that makes it, more sense to me. Yeah. Which uh, I mean, like, so if you get knocked down, like you are, you're in a hole, like for real, yeah. like a kickboxing match. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know how it scored at all. Yeah, um, and they also said in the rules meeting that a knockdown is like even if you get kicked in the leg and you fall over, that's a knockdown. Yeah. Um, and then after what I learned, uh, after one of the matches was over, that if you get given a standing eight count in the kickboxing match, that's basically the equivalent of having been knocked down. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if that's like official official, but um, the the judge that I was shadowing, he was like, yeah, if you get a standing eight count, like that's it, because you're taking just so much, so much damage, so many hits yeah. and stuff like that, yep. that the ref has to like step in and give you a moment to like see if you're knocked out on your feet or not. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So judging is fun. I tried judging uh, jujitsu, uh, refing jujitsu matches, which is like yeah. being a combo judge and, and referee. Yeah. Um, and uh, the the combination of those responsibilities doesn't sit well with me. Um, so uh, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't handle being yelled at. Oh, well at all. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> Makes sense. You know? So, uh, and, and that is to be expected. At least some amount of yelling and dissatisfaction right. is reasonable and, and expected, but I couldn't handle any of it. I was like, you'll, you'll address me politely or not at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. So that 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 went well. Um, <laughs> I feel like but, yelling at the ref never really gets anywhere because they're gonna choose what they want to choose in the moment, no matter what. And it's kind of like, you have you ever heard that saving saying like you don't mess with your server because they handle your food? Mm. It's kind of like that. Like you don't mess with the ref because they handle your points. Like 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm not I'm not proud sure. of it at all. And then and then in, in when I was reflecting on the experience and how I felt doing it, something like that, I was like, you know, I was good for like eighty five percent of the day. Yeah. And then that that other fifteen percent though was just not not worth it for mm. me. Like mm-hmm. I'm there are yeah. other people who have you know other temperaments and stuff like that. They can do that. It's nice to have the opportunity to just be a judge, and not yeah. I don't have to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. Know, and so I like that. I think as jujitsu grows, that will probably be more commonplace. Because I know IBJJF at the highest levels, they have the two judges on the opposite side of the mat. And then they have the ref in the middle. Mm. And the ref doesn't have to make decisions. The judges do. That's great. It really, like, that. separating that out is really the best thing. Because mm-hmm. refing a match should be about safety and um, rules violations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, then, yep. and then assigning points should just be somebody else who's also not worried about that. Yeah, I think the ref does assign points, but the judges are also watching for like um, advantages, penalties, and if they have to make a decision. Hmm. And I'm not sure if that's the way it is in ADCC, but I think it might be also. Yeah, yeah last time I last time I refed, which was the last time I refed, mm-hmm. um, the IBJJF was just starting to like um, sort of certify refs. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, and there and there were already some that were around. I remember a guy saying like at at that tournament, he's like, I can get you like certified refs. Like you don't have to just grab people. Sure. Because um, I was definitely just like the grab. Like oh, you want to come down here and do this? Yeah. Sort of and thing. that's what most local tournaments are still nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They just kind of put an ad out and was like, we need refs, we need scorekeepers, and it's like I remember he applied and he was just like, oh, I'm a purple belt and I know what I'm doing, and then uh, they were like, oh, we don't care as long as you. Want to do it? <laughs> yeah. He was like, great, show up. <laughs> like, yeah. I think there were white belts reffing, and I was like, what in the world? Like, white mm. belts don't even know all the moves yet to be scoring, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> yeah. So as far as the certification goes, um, I'm just going to keep uh, keep finding events to shadow um, until... You know, until the commissioner either likes me or tells me I'm no good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then if, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if she likes me, then then I might get called up to actually, like, like judge something. Yeah. But, it was funny because I walked past you. I gave you a big wave and a big smile. And I was like, I should not have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the, the judge I was shadowing, he goes, oh, you know those guys? I'm like, yeah. He goes, are you a fluid guy? I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, you know, you know. Pedro Sauer? I was like, well, not, not personally, but he put yeah. my black belt on me. He goes, oh, oh, my wife, like, personally knows him. Oh. They, his wife trains at Jeff Curran's place. Oh. Uh, and uh, and so, like, they're, they're from, he's up from Illinois. Yeah. And he, he travels a lot. He's done, I think he said he'd done uh, at least 10 UFCs. Like, he's, oh, cool. he's judged. And he's been around for a very long time. Um, knowledgeable easy to get along with good funny, person good funny stories but then we started then we started sharing pictures i'm like oh that's really cool and i'm like i you know henry montemoros and, and professor sour and, and he's like yeah. oh, i was at fluid for a for a seminar and i was like oh was that last summer and he's like yeah and i was like oh i was in new orleans when that one happened mm-hmm. oh. you know and uh and he's like oh I miss you you know so like small world mm-hmm. small yes. YouTube world we yeah, were. Absolutely. We always say that every time we go to tournaments or competitions or anything around the area, and you look around, and I always tell, like, Garrick, for example, who his, his eyes just lit up. He's like, oh, my God, there's so many people here. And I'm like, you know, there is a lot of people here, but this is, like, everyone. Like, the, the community is big, but it's not that big. Yeah, like, it's you like 80% look around, of the people. And I know Nick and I now at this point, when we're at tournaments, because we're at, like, every single one at this point, and we just, we see people from all over, like, Illinois, Minnesota. We're just, like, saying hi to everyone. Like, I know all the schools in Milwaukee, so I'm constantly... Mm-hmm like talking to them and giving Dan LaPaz a hug every time I see him like it's just it's crazy how big but small it is at the same time and it's really cool because I always wear my bright pink tank top mm-hmm. like as you saw in, in the corner yeah. and I've been recognized as you're the guy that wears the pink right there you go. <laughs> and I'm like yes <laughs> yeah I remember specifically we were sitting on the wall at Fuji before the tournament started just like trying to figure out what the rules were and some dude sat next to us and he was just like I see you. You're here every time. You're you're here all the time wearing that shirt. And he's like, yes, that is weird. <laughs> My coach's uniform. Oh, it's, good. it's good to be recognized. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's a cool community. But when yeah. was the last time you competed? Because I honestly, this was a shock to me. I didn't even know you competed ever. I mean, uh, last last time I competed was uh, 
at the I was blue belt level. And I think it was before Henry gave me my purple belt. Mm. Um, and uh, so I I competed a few times. Um, the first couple times I competed, uh, I also refed. Like one one, uh, of the, one of the tournaments was at Henry's on KK. Like, okay. Like in the gym, and just like all the competitors were just smashed around the outside while the matches were going on. And we had like one match going on on, on like the little upper raised part in the back, okay. and, then, and then one match going on down here. So I, I was refing those, and uh, and then I tried to compete, and my legs were dead. Like oh was, yeah, uh, don't get me wrong, probably still would have lost. Like, <laughs> but it didn't help that like my legs were dead. Yeah, uh, I refereed. <coughs> uh, there was a a tournament at Bayview. Is that a baby? Yeah, Bayview. And I think I, I think I was I was refing stuff that was like in, in an auxiliary gym or a workout room or something like that. So it was like it was like a weird space. <clears throat> the mats were between these two cages where like the equipment was and stuff like that. Uh, and once again, like when I went to compete, legs were dead. Yeah. Got got rolled over. And then so finally I was just like, I'm not gonna do both. Do both. Yeah. I'm gonna either do one or the other. Uh <clears throat> and then um uh I competed in a, a judo tournament once at uh, State Fair, and uh, oh wow! I did a, I did okay there. Um, I didn't uh, I didn't I didn't place. I took fourth place, but I was in like the I was in the final match sort of thing. So you're ranked in judo then? No, I, I never actually touched for a belt. Okay. So okay. I, I I never did like I like right when I was getting to the point where I could make a grade. Um, I, I was uh, seduced by jujitsu, <laughs> so I never went back. So I <clears throat> I have um. You know, I, I have a a foundation, but yeah. I'm, I'm basically maybe a three stripe white belt in judo sort okay. of thing. Like, I knew some stuff, knew some basics, um, but no, I, I went compete. I was actually doing jujitsu, but I went to a, a judo. And I was like, well, let's see what this is. You know, let's let's go do it. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun. A uh, guy tried tomoyanagi, and uh, and I actually spun out of it. And as he was trying to like land me, I w- ended up on his back. Oh, um, and then he crawled back. He moved backwards out of bounds, and then we got stood up. And I was like, "Oh, oh that's a thing." Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and uh, and he he scored like a quarter point off of that one, <clears throat> and then uh, and I think he scored another half point on me. But he he won by points at the end of the end of the match. And that's mm-hmm. the guy who ended up winning the tournament, uh, that little tournament there. And then. Um, the third and fourth place match, I was actually going against a like an older guy, and I was uh, I was more focused. And I was like, okay, not being thrown all of the you know main yeah. thing, this and that and the other thing. He got me with a lateral drop. He got oh. me with a wrestling move. Yeah, and I was I was like, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> so I got beat by a wrestling move at a judo tournament. You yeah. know, so I was like, wah wah, and. Uh, and he was like, yeah, man, I didn't know how to move you. I didn't do that. And I was like, well, I'm just going to go for this lateral drop. Yeah. It, it was getting close to the end. And uh, he got me. Like, it was it was, a, it was a good throw. That's one of my favorites. Is that where you, like, grab the collar and you just drop to your hip and pull him over you? Uh, the, oh, like a sacrifice? I mean, he, no. he did it wrestling style either, even, like, like arm, oh. arm up behind, like, just whip your body around. Mm. And, um, okay. It's, it's a good one against somebody who's giving you lots of forward pressure. Yeah. And, uh. And I apparently was at the time. <laughs> uh, it yeah. was it was a it was a very un un judo move. And I, and as he started doing it, I was like, "What's he doing?" And then I was like, "Oh, this oh no!" <laughs> so I did that. Um, and then uh, I did uh, uh, I think it was Naga two here in uh, in wow. Bayview. Um, I've still got uh, a medal from that and and swords. Uh, I took <laughs> I took gold in uh, uh, in my division. Which was like executive back then, and then I took silver in the men's division, the ones under under like the next age age level down. I didn't cool. get submitted. I didn't submit anybody. Didn't get submitted. I when I won, I won on points, and uh, when I lost, I lost on points. Um, yeah, I think that's a bad. win in itself, though. Yeah, I mean the in the the in the men's division, the guy that won, um, he took me down like double leg in the guard, and then he yeah. could not pass my guard. Yeah, and. So, I mean, it's not like I, I wasn't like, a, it wasn't like a cool match to watch. You know, if anybody recorded it, it would have been sure. boring. Because like, like slap bump, double leg. Guard battle. Guard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, so there was that. And then, uh, but I did have a good, uh, I had a good counter. Uh, it wasn't even a counter throw, just a good counter. 
if you see somebody who's got a bunch of patches on their gi and their fingers are all taped up, <laughs> yeah, they're probably a judo guy. You yeah, know? at least at the time, that's that's what it was. Specifically, when you see the patches, if you see a wahadachi patch, like you're like, oh, judo guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this guy's a judo guy. Watch this. So I was walked out there like I'd never been hip thrown before, oh. and just kind of stood there. Gave him the opening, and and he you like. He did the hip move once to, to see if I would do anything. And I just kind of stood there like I didn't know what was going on. And then when he went for it, I just grabbed him and did the, the Tani and nice. thing. And um, and so, like, I got the takedown yeah. on him. And then I, I basically held him in side control. And, uh, and like, in the last few seconds, um, like, I, I moved from side control to scarf. And I was working on trying to finish him from there. And in the last few seconds, he, like, reversed, reversed. that. But it wasn't, you know, he didn't have enough points on it. No points. So He's probably still salty about that. I mean, I like, so. thinking about it. <laughs> It'd be nice to live in someone else's memory. <laughs> Like he's probably thinking, yeah. yeah. He's probably thinking like that guy. There's that guy plenty who faked of people it. in my head. Uh, sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and that was um, that was the last time I competed. Um, what was it? That's exciting. If it makes you feel better. You're one of those people for me too. No, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it was like one of my first weeks. I think it was probably like my second week training ever. And you were trying to just like have me work past your guard. And you kept sweeping me. Like every time I would try to move, you would just sweep me. And you did it like seven times in a row. And I was just, and you asked me, you're like, do you realize what I'm doing to you? And I'm like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I remember that. And I remember saying like, I'm going to keep doing this yep. to you until you learn how to not fall over. Because yep. the first lesson is like, don't fall over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's it. And uh, yes, and I was I was a little worried. I was like, well, it's Brenton's daughter. So, <laughs> like, I figure you should be able to take, like, a little bit of, like, extra digging. So I was like, uh, I'm going to let you know what I'm doing, too. Like, I'm make you fall over and I'm just going to keep doing it until you can stop it. And then, like, in theory, right, if the, if the lesson takes, then your base develops very quickly mm -hmm. and then that gives you the platform from which to execute all the other techniques mm -hmm. if you don't have a base like it's mm -hmm. it's just there, you can't do jujitsu without a base yep yeah but ever since that day uh up until now three years later i'm like okay if someone does something to me more than twice i'm doing something wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, good lesson there <laughs> yes so thank you <laughs> you're welcome that's a nice one <laughs> i like that video that um we have of me trying that takedown and it was awful when i was a white belt <laughs> yeah and then i pull it off a couple in years later in competition oh it's great yeah like, that's a super one that side by side is really cool yeah and also i'm i'm like that was fairly early in my coming back so i'm still pretty chunky so <laughs> <laughs> i mean not that i'm not chunky right now but like um uh -huh. there's a there's a difference between being like 195 and being like 215 <laughs> yeah yeah that's quite a when you're only 5'8 <laughs> <laughs> if I was like 6'4 I don't think it'd be that big of a deal yeah. Like, yeah did you lose weight I can't tell <clears throat> um, but I'm pretty short yeah. yeah yeah I remember lots of lots of training sessions and I appreciate everything that you've shared with me over the years lots mm -hmm. of good stuff <laughs> I appreciate that yeah but all right. Well, well, did you have any last minute things that you wanted to talk about that we didn't really maybe get to? Not too much. Um, I want to shout out again for the the rollathon mm -hmm. on April thirtieth. Yes, we'll put a link in the comments. Yes, absolutely. It, it's all for charity. It's gonna yeah. be super fun. Uh, multiple schools from the area represented. Um, it's just gonna be a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so much jujitsu. Yeah, great people. Great jujitsu. It's gonna be silent auctions. Um, which will be have lots of great prizes. There's a, Gabe is doing massages mm -hmm. for like twenty bucks or something. Yep, which is not bad. And the entry fee for the whole day is only hundred dollars, and if, you can come and go as much as you want. And like, don't say it's not bad for Gabe. Like Gabe is built. Like I oh, bet yeah. when he drops an elbow in oh your back, God. that like you can <laughs> oh just feel your soul just like releasing all its yes. negative energy. Like he he's built to give massages. Yes, that, I he would is pay fantastic. He so we were just in Punta Cana last week and I got we got a couple's massage and it was it was just not like it was fine, it was good, it was relaxing and everything, but it was, it was a not, relaxing massage. It was, it was not Gabe. And I literally <laughs> I texted Gabe and I was like, I miss your massage. I was like, yours are so much better. And he was like, You cheated on me. And I was like, I will never do it again because you are the only person that I want to massage me at this point. 
He yeah. has definitely, so my legs are super tight, so he always, like, makes sure to work on my quads, and he, like, jams his entire elbow in there. He's taken, like, the crook of his hand and, like, scraped along, like, as hard as, I've cried in his massage. But it's so good. It feels so A good, good afterwards. Cry. Yes. And he also does other things, if you're interested, his company is Healthy Mind and Body Therapeutics. Mm-hmm. But he does, like, cupping, he has, like, hot rocks, he has a whole bunch of stuff he, that he does. He has those suction things now, too. Yeah, that's cupping. No, not cupping. It's uh the the things that you can put on your arms and your Compression. legs. Compression. Compression. Compression sleeves. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, those. Those yes. are nice. Oh, that's everything. Then. Yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's got all the things. So, yeah, yeah, April 30th, if you're in the Milwaukee area, and even if you're not, you should come up to the Milwaukee area. You should, yeah. It's going to be a really good time. For sure. All right. Well, thank you for coming yeah, on today. So much for it was coming super on. fun. Fun time. Yeah. Episode 55 later. So that's Woo! cool. Cheers. But, all right. Have a good Cheers. week of training, guys. Cheers.